Street Boy 30, special episode going down, man. This special episode, uh, this is one of those things where you just can't stop the funny. Um, my good friend, George Lopez. George Lopez has been in the neighborhood many a times, man. And it's crazy because I tell George Lopez this story where I gave my sister Charlene tickets to see George Lopez. And she called me the next day and she was talking about he was so funny. And this is a real story that she thought that she was going to die because she was laughing so hard that she couldn't catch her breath. I've had many of those moments where all I got to do is say to George Lopez, welcome to the neighborhood, and George Lopez just goes. You know, there's been times where I've gotten out the chair and slapped the walls because of George Lopez. So we got to get into it, man. Big Boy 30, special edition. George Lopez and your partner, Big Boy, sometimes you just can't stop laughing. It is always my pleasure yep. to have this man up in here, and that is the one and only legendary George Lopez. George Lopez, welcome back to the neighborhood, my brother. Welcome. It's nice to be back in the neighborhood and with man, the family. Man, you, you got to be one of the hardest working men. I am. In <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Don't, like, get, don't get divorced in California. <laughs> oh. man, and, and why would you say that, bro? Because you got to, huh? I got divorced in California. I was married 17 years oh, and wow. lost million. I'm, right now, just saying that, I lost a million dollars. Right? Oh, oh, man. Wow. Ouch. But, and, and your little one, she just had her birthday. She's 20 now. She's so. 20, and she just hit me up. She wants to get an apartment in Chicago, and she wants me to pay for it. So right. I'm fortunate. Oh. Yeah, I'm yeah. fortunate. You know, I'm fortunate. Yeah, so, <laughs> so that keeps you on the road. That I'm keeps blessed. you on television. Uh, I said, what kind of car do you want, mine? She goes, I don't know. I'm looking at, like, Beamers and the new Lexus. I said, oh, all right. Wow. Well, you look at them. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and, and let me know, because I'm going to send you let something totally different. Because I got a 2003 Mini Cooper that has your name all yeah, over it's it. it's all over it. And we can put vanity plates on it. George Lopez, welcome back to the neighborhood, brother. Um, uh, Yeah, hey. Uh, <laughs> it's been a long time. I know, man. But you know what, man? It, it's been a long time, but you never get far away from me. You know what I'm saying? Even when we're not sitting down, we're always kind of like checking in with each other, though. You know, that's exciting to hear because I'm 62. I live at home by myself with those rescue dogs. So right. if I when I do fall out, I think they might smell the dogs before right. they smell me <laughs> right. decomposing upstairs. We got George Lopez once again in the neighborhood on the quarantine couch. How you, how you been holding up since we last talked, George? Anything can change? Well, you know, a lot's changed in a week. You know, I'm to the point now where I'm taking medication that's already expired. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, let's see if this works. So I'm some Prilosec from 2007. Hey, man, it can't it can't be any worse than what's going down up in here, bro. Like, I, I mean, and, and and the people, like you said, stay home. Like this thing only works if people stay home. So yeah. from the front of my bathroom up on top, you can I can see the streets. And and I'm yelling at people in Spanish because I don't want them to know. It's like, get out of my car, I don't know what's this. Look, look around, you Because <laughs> people, George, you see that some people are still out, man. It seems like more people are coming out. You know, the, this thing only works if people stay home. And, you know, they closed Griffith Park. So, you know, white people, are they're very resilient. So now they found another street to go around. You know, it's almost like Latinos when you don't think anybody's home and you're not, and then you start to look to the back and you go to the side of the house and there's 75 people in the back, but nobody in the living room. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, I thought I heard you guys go up to the back. George Lopez, we're just coming off of the Johnny Depp Amber Heard uh, defamation trial, yeah. you know, and cameras were in the of course they were in the the courtroom and i don't know how you when you got divorced there were no cameras in the courtroom you know what i'm saying can can you imagine if there were cameras in the courtroom well you know i went to a mediator oh, okay um, and I, I thought that you were supposed to look like you didn't have money when you went you know it's almost like my grandmother took a Louis Vuitton <laughs> for, my grandmother took a louis vuitton purse to the social security office and i'm like grandma you're, i don't think you're supposed to be using your good purse at the social security office <laughs> right yeah it is a look yeah you gotta look like you gotta look even when they call your name you have to make them call you twice because you're looking like you can't you know i yeah right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh, I, that's, that's, I, that's me and came in with 
diamonds and uh, uh, sleek pants and put some fifteen thousand dollar purse on the on the table and I was like, oh, I thought you had to look like you needed money, right? Yeah. Yeah. Not in mediation, right? Hey, Amen. Did you watch any of that uh, Johnny Depp Amber Heard defamation yeah. trial? What was your outtake on just what you were seeing with the poop on the bed? The listen. I used to pee in the bed when I got really drunk, so I'm not one. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> and then I would try to put like a, a like a like a Mountain Dew bottle, like maybe maybe I you know spilled in the bed, like, like lay it lay it right next to where it started, and be like, oh man, who's, who dropped my soda? Yeah, I was so faded last night. Uh, who, hey, I put a Red Bull on the, on the bed. Who, who, who spilled my Red Bull? <laughs> But I mean, almost almost to where it's saturated. You know, sometimes you try to flip the mattress. That thing looks like French toast. Like, like, oh, my God. I think, to, I think I might have to go to sit and sleep. <laughs> I owed him a mattress. A mattress. But I mean, you go to court and then you, you, you know, those are the things that people attach to the absurdity of, you know, Johnny Depp laid out in the fetal position in his house, which, you know, I don't know. It, it happens. It, it, <laughs> I mean, yeah, uh, but 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 it, it I mean, just we become so salacious and, and so involved in other people's lives that it, it, finding shit in someone's bed is just like, oh, yeah, you know, <laughs> no, I, no, I don't, <laughs> like, uh, you know, now he like big, you never mountain dude before, no? you never mountain you know, dude. Sometimes, you know, if, if you're in a hotel, at least you can say, Oh, I didn't know they put candies on the. <laughs> that must be what's in the yeah know, man i, I let i let one of them uh mints melt down mm -hmm. george lopez your life don't go on pause but how content are you right now you know that's a good question like you know i i've been working really hard for the last 20 years with the shows and the talk show and the movies and all that stuff but it was 20 years even before that so 20 years of like in the clubs and at the ice house and and all that stuff and then the last 20 years so to be in this house um, uh, for a month or for going on five weeks now, the, the the crazy thing is, you see this thing. So so I'm home during the day. This is a a bark reducer, right? So this you, it, it sends in ultra uh, sound waves to dogs that bark in the neighborhood. Okay. Really? So so everybody has uh, dogs that bark in their neighborhoods. You go to work, you don't really hear them during the day. So they don't make, I got a great Dane down there and there's some dogs across the street. So one didn't work. So I call out, I, I said, Amazon two didn't work. I have six aimed make, at these dogs. And yesterday was the day I connected six. When I hit this, I heard a dog go motherfucker. <laughs> I might have to scale back. It might be too much. <laughs> hey, hey, George, is that really something with dogs that you have in your hand right there? It's oh, right yeah, there. yeah, man. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know hey, how man. annoying your mom could You know how annoying your mom could be? Just like six times that. Jose knows that the Mexican moms, yeah. you know, they, in the old days, they used to ring a bell. Come in, that, that fucking triangle. Uh, this is like 50 triangles and 25 Mexican <laughs> ants that are that are going to leave without you if you don't get in the cart. Get in my car on this! It's high pitched. Is it just you and the dogs living together now or the dog? No, man, the dog, yeah, but he, he takes off. Right? <laughs> he is, um, you know, when you get home and you turn the TV on and everything's kind of warm in the house, that's when the dog be like, hey, man, I missed you. Right, right, right. He's yeah. home. When you open the door and a dog sees you and turns around, like you open the door and he's like, oh. I'm like, man. Oh, <laughs> like, back. look who's back. He just yeah. doesn't so, like you. So this, so this show is perfect because in the show, I adopt a dog. The guy thinks I mm -hmm. want a pit bull. The guy really thought I wanted a pit bull. Yeah. And the dog doesn't connect with me. And then I meet a girl. We go hiking, and she doesn't think she. She asked me like, oh, "Who, who are you? You know, what do you do?" And I said, "Oh, you know, I, 
I, I do, you know, this and that, you know. And then she's like, where are you from, George? And, you know, we're up at the near yeah, the yeah, observatory. Yeah. You just point. So these hills, right? So yeah. I point. I go, over over that plateau, there's a Latino community. <laughs> yeah. Over the ravine. Over the ravine. <laughs> hey, George, so you live alone alone? Yeah. Man. A- and my house is, uh, my house is uh, haunted. Oh, what? yeah. Yeah. You still at the same place? I'm still at the same place. Oh, yeah, place. yeah, man. Why is it haunted? Um, I guess it's been there forever, and there's just spirits come down. They're like, yeah, it's kind of nice in here. Like, yeah, like, why would everything. they leave? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, we've heard uh, voices in there. <gasps> there's been banging. Mom will tell you that uh, there's uh, uh, entities that you see walking by or walking in what? the middle of the night. Cool. And you're comfortable with that? Yeah. Like, they're not kicking in oh, no mortgage hey, or nothing? man, listen, when you grow up, you know, the cuckoo, the lechuza... <laughs> You know, yeah. Every lady watering the grass with a Yorona, you're kind of built in. <laughs> but you built for this. No, nah, we'll be some ladies, but like Yorona should be a fucking kid. <laughs> <laughs> Every fucking time it gets dark. Hey man, so but you in there and you've you've heard it. Cause I remember the one time, man. and you got a lot of history in the house as well, man. But yeah. I don't know now because growing up we had everything, bro. We had rats, we had roaches, yeah. we had spirits. We you, and, and now that I'm a little bit older, I don't think I could just sit and know that something else is in the house spiritually. Man, you know, uh, maybe a couple months ago, I had a, a, a folder on top of my bed, um, leather folder with a scarf up there, and it'd been there for maybe three months. Mm-hmm. And I get up in the middle of the night sometimes because I go to bed early and. I start working in the middle of the night, and one and one time about three thirty, always happens between three and four. That scarf came off of the top of the bed and landed on on my arm, mm. and I was like, "That uh, did, yeah, didn't didn't just happen." And I'm like, "Yeah, it did. It just kind of came down, and just landed on my arm." Like somebody picked it up and tossed it. Hell? Like someone was just kind of like, "Just let me put it next to you." Like maybe somebody came next to me. There, there's a there's somebody that. Uh, I, Don't I, show me nothing in your phone, bro. Because I'm gonna leave. I knew <laughs> that past, and um, their their face uh, uh, came to to my because I, I kind of felt that there was somebody um, in the other room, and then I ran the uh, ca- camera, but I looked the other way as if you're trying to psych out a ghost. You, you know. I'm going like this. <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 I can't see. He can see me. Like how and people like, pick you up yeah, in the airport. Yeah, like, yeah, oh, there yeah, you go. There go George. Is that, uh, is that Bradley Cooper? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. I, I'm out. I, I don't know that Bradley Cooper. Guy. So, so that's what you did with the ghost, the spirit I, in the I house. The ghost, yeah. Like, yeah. If I, if I, if they they don't see me doing this, watch this. He moves okay. out of the way. See that? Wait, hold on, man. What am I looking at here? That's a face. I, I lit it up. So this was sitting next to me on the bed, and then it moves out of the way. You see it move out of the way, hey man. Um, the see it move out of the way. Oh, I'm gonna yeah. tell you. I'm gonna tell you right now, bro. Watch this, George. I didn't see nothing. Okay. I, no, I, I saw it, but I, I ain't invite nothing in. Yeah, I ain't invite Damn. nothing in. I, I was in. Uh, I was in Las Vegas, and this guy was uh, was heckling me in the mm-hmm. in the in the front row. And uh, how long ago? Oh shit! Or twenty-five years, okay, probably okay. twenty long, long time ago. And he he's heckling, and he had a uh, port wine stain <laughs> over his eyes. I guess that's what it's oh, called. Where, where it was like, like the discoloration. It was like, yeah. yeah, yeah. So he was talking. And I really didn't. I really didn't look at him closely. And then he was heckling with a port wine stain. Yeah. And then I said, uh, "Listen, man, if if I had a port wine stain, I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be talking. I wouldn't Hell be yeah." Happy. And um, uh, hurt people, hurt people. Oh, you know, yeah. his job it, was to come and say and there something. There was something called, back there called called uh, uh, DD7, uh-huh. and DD7 would take any stain out. <laughs> so I told him to go get some DD7, and we we take it. But but I mean, there, there's a there's a lot there's a lot of uh, George. Anger. But one but one year you do you know you do like your New Year's resolutions, and you say from this point forward zero tolerance right so zero tolerance on oh, hecklers hey dude i remember i was at a show of yours one night george and this lady said something and george you tore her ass up you know and i, I wish i could remember what it was but you repeated what, what it was it was a it was a white lady at the show 
and you tore her ass I think up. I, yeah, yeah. I you know what I'm saying? There's been a few of them, yeah. Yeah, we were at the Gibson, them, man. Yeah. And she, They're soldiers, she, man. You're like, she paid dearly. War, she had good warriors. seats, too. Yeah, she was in the front Oh, row. my God. She had good seats. Because you could see her. Yeah. And you let her ass have it. Yeah. I enjoyed it. You know what I'm saying? Do you think there's <laughs> another relationship for George Lopez? I don't think so. Really, though? No, I've... I've uh, it, 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 check this out. You know, people do walks of shame in the morning mm -hmm. and stuff like that. My, I, I just rescued a dog, uh, Owen. I call him Van Owen because <laughs> of Van Halen. And that dude does the walk of shame. A chihuahua walks of shame on me in my bed. Like, he and I are in bed. Uh -huh. In the middle of the night, he'll get up and he'll be like, Creep I'm, away. <laughs> and, and he'll go downstairs <laughs> and sleep in a chair. <laughs> and, and, and and they said to me, oh, he's a lover. He's a cuddle. The people that watch when you him. you got him? When I got him. No, he's watching. They send me pictures of him. He's on the lady's lap. He's sitting his ears. He's like caressing, licking her. This dude in the middle of the night gets up. And I, my bed's pretty high, so he risks, you know, blowing out his head. <laughs> Every night. He jumps off, patink, and you just hear tick, 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 down, down, and the furthest part of the house, like, he's like, that motherfucker won't find me over here. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm going to hide in his he, pants. He leaves. Does. He leaves. Oh, man. George, what do you dog, think that is, is, bro? Just disconnection, man. He's uh. like, he, he, I, I'm almost getting ready to give him to the dog sitter because he looks like he's savvy. Such a great time. Like, I'm like, you know what, lady? You can keep him. Like with somebody else? He's little, yeah. He's having a great time. He's chasing a ball, plays all day. They took a, they took a picture of him with a toy that toys in the air. Like, you know, hey, like, man. Damn. He all on your itinerary. Like, Can't wait till you leave for the yeah. comedy get Can't down. Leave it. Like, and then even my assistant said, I think she, he, sh he should stay there till the end of the month because today I'm not going to be home. Right. I wasn't home last night. I had a party. Uh, and she's like, I think you should. You Wait, should how are you not home well, last party. night? Yeah. You had a party. Well, I'm not gonna be home today. <laughs> last night. <laughs> yeah. Listen, not home for him. listen. I, I was to say I missed a hell of a party. I, yeah. I, have, I have the greatest parties. Like I don't yeah. want nobody there, but when I do, <laughs> when they are there, <laughs> they're great parties. What is the nastiest thing George Lopez has done since quarantine? <laughs> um. I might have pulled some bread out of the trash that I thought was bad. I might have, I, I might have, Wednesday night, I might have gone like, whoa, 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 because trash comes Thursday. Right. Wednesday night, I might have went, hey, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You know what I'm saying? Got, got to make this ham sandwich real quick. I still, I still got the two colas and a little piece of oral wheat. <laughs> yeah, I know. Did that return my Mickey Mouse story? No, no. Oh, Lord, All right, no. So, so check this out. So I'm doing a thing with uh, uh, Michael Eisner from Disney, like mm -hmm. Wonderful World of Disney opening. And uh, he's giving me a, a thing. And, and um, someone had told me that, that Disney hires uh, Latinos, people from Guatemala, from, from hot countries, to be the, the characters because, because uh, they can take the heat in the summer. So while I'm there, Mickey Mouse is, is in uniform, and we're just standing there, the camera, right? And I said, hey, um, are, you, are you Latino? And he, he hit the little white hands, and he goes like this, like, I don't know. It's like, it's Mickey Mouse. He can't talk. Right, right, right. And I said, uh, I said, because um, uh, they say they hire a bunch of Latinos, you know. So he's standing there, Mickey Mouse. He looks around to see if Michael Eisner's there, and he goes like this. Oh! <laughs> He did a little dance. Right. He did a samba. Yeah, he, did. he did a samba. Oh, man. Like, Minnie, and I said, what about Minnie? And then Minnie's standing there. She goes like this. And then she starts going. Yeah. They were both Damn. Latinos. Oh, yes. both Latinos. That was awesome. The little kid from the Anki Boys is my, is my grandson. Oh, oh my God. God. Hey, man, you see what yeah. Pops is going through right now? Yeah. Yeah, man. He, is it Randy? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's a... He's fighting cancer right now, man. And, you know, and he's, you know, documenting everything. And, you know, he's taking us to his chemo with him. We continue to hold him up in prayer. And little Bryce, his son, mm -hmm. which is playing your, your great grandson, that little dude is amazing, man. I can't wait Incredible. to see what kind of work you, you pull off with Lopez versus Lopez with, with the cast that you have there. The first time I saw him, I said, hey, man, I saw what you did in the Cheech and Chong thing like a fan and then he's like huh and then you realize yeah. that he's just a six-year-old kid yeah 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 That's yeah crazy yeah you know, i thought he was gonna be oh thanks did you see the one i did about the, yeah. uh, the titanic did you see the titanic one i did but i, I was all fanning out on him and he was like huh oh yeah yeah he's yeah that he he's see and say you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. he knocked it out though bro he's he wasn't around in talented. 2015 man he wasn't around in 2015.
That's crazy, that man. Crazy. And I and I pray for his pops, man. It's yeah, such yeah. a dynamic duo. And it's just family, as a bro. family. Somebody sent me, you know, some Anki Boy, early Anki Boy stuff and, yeah. and and they go, That's kid's hilarious, man. And then and you know, he was doing the Cheech and Chong stuff, you yeah, know, man. In, the, in the car, you know, like my license, you know, and, and um and then the idea for the show came and then we're like everybody's like, I, I think that kid would be great. Well, how do we get a hold of him? You know, who does he have an agent? But I, I, I had reached out to Randy about how funny those guys were and he yeah, called man. me so i had his number so i called him and i said hey man um it's george you know we have this thing going on i think that he he was close to getting the deal at nickelodeon and i was like i've been in nickelodeon uh it's all right right, right. Yeah. <laughs> no hate but it's not nbc so i said you know whatever you decide you know that we want we want bryce but you know we're at nbc I mean, we'll take care of him you know so the show idea and then he he did that. He he came over and you know we worked it out with him and and uh, you know Randy was there I think a couple of times, but his mom and his grandma was there. And and I mean this kid in the beginning it was a little I mean he's like maybe six or seven, so it's a little bit you know because he's, he's, he's like a kid. Yeah. he's social he's social media famous and like in every Denny's you know they got a menu with influencers you know mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then. You know, they're like, he's an influencer, and, and I, you know, I'm older. I'm like, is that one of those people that gets the kids to eat, like, soap? Right. <laughs> they try, try to eat a whole thing of yeah. cinnamon with no yeah. one. Uh, uh, that's, like, kind of. So, and then in the beginning, it was, it was, a, little bit, it was a little bit rough because he, he didn't have the discipline of, of being at a show all the time. Mm. So, gradually, you know, um, he started to uh, kind of, uh, you know, understand – with the mm. job and titles, you know, and we knew that Randy was sick, you know, and then um, when Randy passed, you know, he took a little time off and he came back. And the guy, Matt Shively, that plays, you know, Ann's, my partner there, um, um, has been really great with the man, like almost like a, you know, just a surrogate person and Al yeah. and all that stuff. And It and, had to be good for the family to have that, you guys as a family man, at that you time know, like, too. Though. Like, uh, you know, at Christmas, you know, I, you know, I gave him a Christmas present and, and, you know, we're not still as close, you know, and then, uh, when the when the show ended, you know, I I uh, I gave him some some stuff, you know, and and um, he came to my room, and I, I'm like, uh, hey man, I love you, you know, I love you, and uh, uh, he goes, uh, I love you too, and, and I was like, oh, God, don't all cold hearted, you know, <laughs> yeah. and they come in, they go, no, he's he's crying in the he's crying outside the door, like he, even he didn't even he didn't want me to see him emotional. So he goes, I love you. Yeah. And then he walks out. I'm like, Do you know how come I'm crying? He's yeah. like eight. You know, he's not crying. They, they go, oh, it broke down in the hallway. It's like, oh. Oh, oh, good. Now right. I feel better. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I mean, I but love that kid, But he had to wear with all to make sure yeah. like, he, he, he knew how to hide his emotions yeah, at man, such an early age, yeah, too. He's, he's, He's he's great. I, I love him, man. He's great. And he did, <laughs> his kids, you know, he's got more Jordan shoes than Michael Jordan. Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> and then he, he says to Matt and Al, you know, I'm sitting there. Not to me. No one say anything to me, you know, like that. And he goes, you guys ever see $500 on the floor? And they go, no. He goes, look at these. Oh. <laughs> you said he won't say that to you, huh? Nice. Like, like, what do we create? He goes, this chain is, you know, this chain is uh, $20,000. Man. And then, what did I have? Uh, <laughs> Johnny Carson's Rolex or something that I bought. And I said, you see this? This is your chain and your shoes. Yeah. <laughs> and your mortgage. Yeah. And it's not on the floor. Yeah. It's not on the floor. I, re- I rescue dogs. You know, I rescue oh, dogs. Cool. And, uh, and you know, they have CBD. They have CBD for dogs. Like, I didn't know that they had CBD for dogs. So I, I rescued Chihuahuas. I Chihuahuas down there. But it's like real CBD. Like, it's dog CBD. But it's real CBD. So I've been giving these dogs CBD. To- hey! So since September, (laughs) since September, and uh, they don't make any noise. Like they just go like this. Yes. And and they're all and they're all rescues. And like a week and a half ago, I heard one say to the other one, "So you didn't know your mom either." Yeah. Yes. (laughs) Yeah. Talk to me. Converse with me now. Dad just left. Amen. I had a brother, and they took him, and they left me. Hey, man, could you imagine, George, if you really could sit in on a dog's conversation uh, of what really happened? Like, man, I think I was like oh. six weeks. And I remember being on the the, the brass thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, can you imagine? Like, we love the dog, but that's got to sound depressing. You know what? If if a dog could talk, we wouldn't want a dog to be able to talk. 
because the police would show up and he goes, that's the motherfucker right there. <laughs> right there. Kicked me last week. For, I didn't even I didn't even do nothing. He couldn't find his keys. He fucking kicked me. Hey, George, can you imagine if Tigers could talk what they would say about Joe Exotic? Either he would be in jail for life or my man would be out. If you want to say who was Tiger King? Listen, first of all, Latinos always know somebody worse. You know, like your feels watching it and they go, there, you seen this dude? I work with a guy that was 10 times worse than that. But, <laughs> but they were eliminating healthy tigers, man. That's not good, dude. First of all, you, you shouldn't be able to buy a tiger for $700, but also you shouldn't be able to kill healthy animals like, like tigers, mm -hmm. you know? Do, do you, do you prefer being alone, George Lopez? Yes. Wow. Yeah. Is that is that also where comedy your comedy come from? Like, you know, you don't have to depend on somebody else showing up. You know, like every time we book you, you're on time. You don't have a comedy partner and you're not part of a group. <laughs> oh, right. You know what I'm saying? That's right. Uh you 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 know, I, I grew up alone. It's funny, man. The, the, my therapist said, Hey, you know, it's not sad at fifty. He goes, At sixty, it's sad to always be alone. At seventy, it's really sad. Right. So he says, So you have to uh Make connections. I haven't seen him since he told me that. Right, right. <laughs> so this dude, don't judge me. Like, only God can judge me. Like, and you're not you. God. You, know, it's like, you don't know me, fool. You did a lot of like comedy, really, with your eyes. Yeah. yeah. And when you got to te was it when you got, to got to television, TV, yeah. they the, told you like the first couple were pretty. They were like pretty big. Like what? You know. <laughs> and they're like, hey man. It's a little, and, and and then you know they put that in in the review of the show, and they were like, "This guy's not. This, this isn't gonna work out. This dude, and that's his punchline." Like, hey, yeah. you, know? you know what's crazy, George, is that you can't even really do it. I can't do it right now. No. And I, and I'm talking about if anyone look at old early, early George yeah. Lopez, yeah. like you did a lot of comedy with your eyes, right. bro. And when somebody sure. comes and tell you, you know, slow down, yeah, like you're doing too much. Uh, they you, the couple notes I got was, "Don't pop your eyes out." And then I wore a sweater one time, and they said, you know, your tits are too big. Yeah. So those are the two things. You know, when you do TV, it, it adds weight. All of a sudden, you're like, let me see. And you look at the picture. Like, Ching, oh, what the fuck? <laughs> that full C cup. And I'm like, hang on a second. I'm going to go change this thing, put a jacket on, man. But, you know, I was sitting in a way. My tits were out there. It's like, God damn. It's like, it's, it's, hey, my eyes are up here. You know? <laughs> Wow. Yeah. It's like, damn, you look at my chi chis man. I was lactating with that little, one, one was, one little wet dot right there. And I'm lactating to you know. George Lopez, the comedian that we see on the stage now. Yeah. Polished, perfected. We know when we go there. I told you how I almost died. At, you know, I, yeah, I yeah. blacked out at one of your shows. Yes, my sir. sister thought she was going to have a heart attack at one of your shows. What is the worst you've ever bombed on stage? Oh, man. You know, I was in D.C. This was probably in the early 90s. Oh, and um, I, I was doing this big event, like a, a Hispanic uh, event. There was probably 3,500 people in this ballroom. Did you think, like, man, it's my people out there. This this going to kill. Well, you know, it, it was so it was such a big place that it was hard to get people's attention. Oh. And back then, all those things are hard to do because they serve dinner and the mm -hmm. people are eating. Clank, 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 and clank, the people clank, are going clank. around. So I, uh, this is great. I, I went up there and I started into some stuff and it wasn't working. Mm -hmm. It wasn't working, wasn't working. But I forgot that I had to introduce a priest who would do like a blessing, an invocation. Right. So the, the father went up after me and then said some words and he got laughs. Like a couple of laughs. I think he was making fun of me. And in the paper it said that the Father was funnier than I was, and oh. and, and, and uh, well, I warmed him up, but but the, right. it was <laughs> right. it was it was it was rough. Does that send you back to the lab to write? Is it was it the same material that killed other places? No, though? it's just you know it's just one of those things. Those events are always like it's not a comedy. Like club you got a bomb you, though. You, you you the only way to get good yeah. is to be bad. Because I get people, George, that say, "Man, you should do stand up." But I I it's, don't want to. The bomb is like when you would when I would eat it, I would try to go back to the hotel or wherever I was staying and take a shower like as quickly as I could. Scrub it off of to you. Get it get it off you. Damn. But there were some bad nights. Listen, all comedians have had have had bad nights. But it hurts. You know when you're out there and you're by yourself. Yeah. It, it, it really does. Like you gotta like boxers. You lose a fight, everybody's watching. And that's you know, you immediate. Asking, you know what I'm saying? Like the laugh is immediate. I'm pretty sure that puts you on a high. And if a bomb is immediate, oh. that's gotta be like. But oh. all of those things you learn all the bombs you learn from to make you better so that if you ever do you feel like again, you can't bomb now 
It's it, it's uh you know I, I can pull it out. I yeah. can I can put it together. I yeah. put, you know it's a lot of hours. Like a I, pilot, you know. I, I think I was, yeah, of hours. yeah. You got your flying hours in. <laughs> Bobby, the the prop guy, was the prop guy from my first show, and he and I and he and I were pretty good friends. So as the show, you know, people used to dress like if they were going to a nightclub. So after the show, I would I would look out there and I would say, Hey, Bobby, there's a there's a there's a girl over there in um uh, uh like a fuchsia uh top you know to be specific you know like a fuchsia top ask her if she wants i said you see her. i said don't look over there but you see her and he's like uh the fuchsia top and he's looking at the direction and he goes yeah yeah i see her chief and i said okay and then ask her if she wants to come back so i go to my room and take off the microphone and then go say goodbye to the guests and as they're thinning out he comes over and he goes, she's in the green room uh, getting a drink. So I walk in there and there's probably a girl in there that's bigger than I am by probably a half. And I look around and she's like, hi. And I go, hey, how's it? how you doing? And I walk back out and he goes, I go, well, that's salmon. <laughs> that's not, that's not, he goes, that, he goes, that's fuchsia. I go, that's salmon. So I got I got to go in there, and I walk in there, and she's eating lamb chops, but she's done. <laughs> so the bones look like a cartoon campfire. Remember when we used to watch cartoons, and they have the, the logs on top of each other, <laughs> like that. The log she had maybe fifteen lamb bones on top of each other, like a campfire that. Yogi Bear used to light in ye yellow Yellowstone Park. <laughs> oh man! Oh Lord! From there on, you probably like, man, the one in the black, just fresh, fresh. <laughs> that one in the black. You know, like Jesus Christ! Hey man, how long did you did you hang out with it, George? A lot longer than I intended to. <laughs> and that's what you get. Hey, Damn. man, did you always know you wanted to be a comedian? Because a lot a lot of comedy could come from dark places, too. Like, how do you make this funny? I mean, I think maybe from the time I was 11, you know, I I, uh, I, I was writing jokes and I would get, like, little, you know, right on the backs of the envelopes of the gas company, all the bills, right? Just mm -hmm. And then I started to buy those little things that the detectives take out at the scene. Right, you know, yeah, like, yeah. So what was his name? You know, like the little flip notebooks. Flip, I think yeah. I had a bunch of those. Still have them. You know that from back then, and then in 1979, I wrote myself a note, like August 6th or 4th of 1979, saying that one day America would know me, that I would be great, and that uh, I, um, I would hit him like a hammer, and all this. And I signed it in 1979. And then, uh, so did kind anybody of, believe that? No, besides you, nobody believed me. You know, they, and you know Latinos, you know, like in Spanish, they would say, "Hey, George." They're like, yeah, you know, you're still doing that stupid shit right. that you use. And I'm like, yeah, you know, nobody ever really gave you any credit for it, you know. And then uh, uh, they used to have boxing at the country club in Reseda. Mm -hmm. And in the and when I was working at uh, at um, in Northridge, my friend Manny used to be a boxer. Manny Olivas, he lived in Canoga Park. And then we went one time, and Michael J. Fox was there at at the fights when Back to the Future was number one, wow. and then he had his show on NBC. And my friend Ernie w was with me, the guy I grew up with, and I said to him when we were leaving, I said, man, what's it like to have a TV show on the air and you have the number one movie? And right now I have a number one movie and I have the TV show on the air. Man, how yeah. crazy is that, bro? Yeah. How yeah. crazy is that? Full circle. Who are you quarantined up with, man? Because we, we got you on Zoom as well, and I see that you're very relaxed. You, oh, you no one. No. Listen, so I've never been home this long since I've had the house for six years. Right. So it's so quiet. Like I live by the by Griffith Park. I heard somebody fighting in Boyle Heights. Like I heard somebody <laughs> say, I'm never gonna be able to be myself. And then it's door slamming. Hey George, just, have you ever had to sit down and not do a show or sit down for this long since you've been a professional comedian or even in life? Even when I sucked, I had more gigs than like once a month, you know. Um, and now, you know, it's bad when, you know, guys that don't like you are doing well wellness checks on you. Like they go, hey, 
<laughs> Carlos Mencia called. He wants to make sure you're okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> hey, George, I was going to ask you. And I mean, I said something about our former leader. The Secret Service came to my house. I mean. What? With uh, that, Trump? Yeah. Oh, man. And, and, and I had my attorney with me, and then, it, uh, you know, they, they said, do you remember re retweeting a picture of El Chapo? Yeah, and, with the, and I was like, El Chapo. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love it. Is Where that the name I, I said, I, is he a gypsy king? Right. Like, I, don't, I don't know. And then mm. they took, you know, they have everything you ever put on social media. They have yeah. access. Everybody. So he says, maybe maybe this will open the briefcase and there's, there's a picture of it, of a T-shirt in it. They took the time to investigate and come to oh, your wow, house. Jesus. But you know what? Secret Service been on you before. Cause didn't, didn't you do the speech at the White yes. House? And you took your speech. I think maybe three is the charm. <laughs> so, so he says, "Do you think that this is funny?" Mm. You know, my my lawyer's like, "You don't have to answer that." You know, and I'm like, uh, "Right now, I don't." But <laughs> you turn into like a little kid. I, right now, but when I did, I did. I thought, I thought <laughs> but right now, I don't. <laughs> and then there was the eighty alleged eighty million dollar bounty that Iran had had put, um, and and then. Como pendejo, you know, uh, on a Sunday afternoon, I put, we'll do it for half. Yeah. You know. They came at you for that, that, for that. Yeah. And then they said, that's a, you know, a threat. And I said, well, you know, I'm a Latino, so I don't think you understand. That's more of an estimate. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. That's my right. price. I mean, yeah. get somebody to do it cheaper, get them. But I mean, that's with material and everything. That's that's me. With material, dog. I, mean, you know, I know it's a little high, but, you know, just, you know. But I'm, I'm, not, offend, by my I'm work. not offended. Ask her out. Yeah. I'll be right here. <laughs> But I mean, <laughs> one, one time when I first moved in, I was trying to be all, you know, non Chicano. But not around. Non Chicano, you know, I said, I'm going to set my alarm. And then when I get back on Sunday, I, I don't know the code. Right. Back, you know? <laughs> it's all the same code, anyways. <laughs> so I'm trying to run around and do the code. And then I, I finally get it. And then 20 minutes later, you hear, open it up, the LAPD. It's a, it's a white cop and then a Latino cop. And the Latino cop goes, hey, what's up? And I said, I said, oh, man, with the alarm? Yeah, sorry, man. Like, I I, I don't know. I, I never set the alarm, and I set the alarm, and, you know, it just went off, man. And, and then there's silence, you know. And then the white cop goes, can I, can I see some ID? Oh, and my God. I said, God. oh, uh, yeah. And the, and the Latino cop goes, um, yeah, that's George. Yeah, yeah, yeah just, just for me. You know, so I said, uh, uh, come on in. And I can't, and I can't find it, you know. Right. So I can't find my license. I always, I'm, I always lose my wallet. I, I can't find my license. So we're in the house looking around, and you've been in the house. It doesn't. Yeah. There's really not. It doesn't look <laughs> a lot like the house I would, you know. So I'm looking around. I'm like, ching out, man. It doesn't even look like I live here. Right. <laughs> right. And I'm like, shit. <laughs> he has a kid. Yeah, yeah, man. man. So I'm like, yeah. Um, I go, this is all your stuff. I said, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then I, I go, oh. So I go to the refrigerator, open it up. There's chile in there, corn flour. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's some, you know, some costillas and red chile. That guy goes, that's good enough for me. All right. <laughs> sorry, to, sorry to bother you, you know. But nobody in that in that neighborhood has, you know, costillas with red yeah. chile. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> and corn and flour. Right. right. <laughs> so corn. Cool. See, somebody's glasses. I'd like to back my opening act, Dr. Dre. <laughs> <laughs> community in Los Angeles. As a Latino, I can say that Big Boy's commitment to the Latino community has been there all of the 27 years he's been on the air. And if you don't believe it, his wife is named Vero. <laughs> <laughs> if there's one uh, glitch, don't ever let him uh, recommend anybody to work on your house. <laughs> <laughs> Right there. I thought I brought my speech, it was a list of shit you had to fix. <laughs> I have, I've been asked to be at a lot of these uh, uh, star ceremonies, won by pet boys. <laughs> One by where there was going to be a Chipotle until E. coli broke up. <laughs> but uh, I have never been asked to uh, speak. Uh, uh, for someone that I consider uh, family. Like, you know, I have a Donald Trump line. I say, he mm -hmm. he calls Mexicans uh, rapists and cr uh, criminals and rapists. And I said, so next time I see him, I'm going to fuck him and rob him. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. 
Speaking yeah. of Donald Trump, we can't have you here because you're one oh of those cats, God. man. I follow you that on social cool, media. Yep. You don't hold your tongue when it comes to Donald Trump, And he man. won't block I me. I, I'm not sure what you have to do to get Donald Trump to block you. This fool, man, with the abortion stuff. If he oh, was in a bar, he, if he was in a bar, they'd cut him off. Like, they'd go, come on, man, yeah. you got to leave. Right, 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 I right, man. I want no Muslims in this country. <laughs> yeah. All right, all right, buddy, take all it right, easy. Hey, home. my wife is more beautiful than your wife, eh? Your wife is ugly. You, uh, all right, cut. To, I'm not one Mexican. I'm going to build a wall to keep They're Mexicans like, man, out. Get your ass Those out of here. people come out for the kitchen. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck your mother. And then when Trump first announced that he was running. I couldn't believe it. Man. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe that you could segregate and blame. I think he doesn't. I think he thinks all Latinos are Mexicans. Mm -hmm. like, right, right, yes, right, right. He doesn't make a difference between. And then uh, when he went to the border, he didn't really go to the border. I think he went to Durango. To, right, right. Uh, yeah. Hidalgo. <laughs> and then all the Mexicans were moving the chairs around. They're like, hey, Mr. Trump, sit, sit down right here, Trump. Yeah, yeah. Sit down right here. Hey, Rudy, what are you doing? He doesn't like Mexicans. So what? I don't like him either. Oh. Trump. Oh. <laughs> Some dude gave a stool out from another dude so man, he could sit crazy. down, man. And, and, and those hats. I'm making my own hats that say, make America chingon again. I'll send some more. Man, let me yeah, ask you this. What do, what do you think make America great again? What do you think that means, George Lopez? I think it means make America white again. Yeah. I think it means let's let's separate the people. Let's have, you know, what the, let's have it the way we used to have it when mm -hmm. it was just us, mm -hmm. you know? Make it great again. Mm -hmm. That is scary. Man. It is great. This country is great. A and, you know, you, you have to, if you're looking at, like, migrants taking jobs or those jobs those jobs nobody wants those jobs. Right. they're ants they're like worker ants man and they and they're needed mm -hmm. you know if you take all the latinos out of the salinas and gilroy and watsonville and out here you won't see a blueberry but, hey you won't see a blueberry for the rest of your life you won't see a raspberry you go to the markets right now it'll just be it'll be nothing there just one lady crying i don't know <laughs> <laughs> the lettuce don't come <laughs> How do you really feel about You have about a tomato? There's one in our in Agora. <laughs> do you think that they had your phones tapped and all, everything because the intelligence that they have? I, I think so. Man. I would say. And, and it's not paranoia. This is like real. They no, showed it's up. A little, it's a little paranoia. But, uh, you know, the week that they were going to come, like, it was on Fox News and 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 then, you know, I kind of knew they were going to they were gonna show up and then, you know, I'm laying in bed by myself and I'm like, you know, they're going to come in here and do a Marilyn Monroe, put something in my culo, over, overdose, you know. Yeah. Wow. Find me face down with a wow. phone in my hand. Right. <laughs> you know, the, you know, the, it's they, been done. If they can do Marilyn Monroe, they can do George Lopez. Yeah, it you know, be the, done. The way I treat those dogs, they're not going to bark. He's upstairs. Right. You know? <laughs> Yelling at him all day. Yeah. He's we've been, upstairs. We've been waiting on you guys to get here. <laughs> we, no, we're not going to bark. We're in quarantine. The world is crazy. We're safer at home. The economy is different. If all this could go away today, George Lopez, if you voted for Trump, would you? Um, no, I would never. I would never vote for him. Damn. I would never under. I, I I would never under any situation um, think about it. And and politics aside, clearly this guy is, is over his head. I mean, wanting to sign every stimulus check or wanting his name on every stimulus check is ridiculous. And, you know, I used to think he w would make a great Latino because he had a lot of the things that we say, hey, you sexually assaulted that lady. Are you kidding? Look at her and look at me and tell me, who are we doing? Oh, or I don't know who that is. Hey, so there's a guy that's been fraudulent. Uh, I, I don't know him. And then they show a picture of him together. But I, I don't know who you're talking about. It wasn't me. The, 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 there was a guy in Florida that, that had a list of 100 people that he wanted to blow up, you know, to politicians and, and people in other countries, and, and, and I was on the list, you know. Damn. So, and, and we should have definitely did this via Zoom. Oh, and DL, <laughs> and, and, yeah, and DL Hugan is like, was I on the list? I'm like, I, I don't know. I, I, I mean, I don't want to be on the list. He goes, right. yeah, but, you know, I talk more about him than you do. I mean, I should be on the list. Hey, listen, man, you're upset because you're not on the list to get blown up? All right. Yeah. <laughs> Like, hey, you, you can have my, my spot. <laughs> here, come sit right here. So, so, you know, when when they caught that guy, they caught he lived in his van. He was in Florida, you know, and and they had a list of a hundred people, and they had bombs that pipes that he had already made. So, yeah. you know, I got they they called me and um, I was doing that a movie out of town. That's like all the FBI, the, the uh, sheriffs, park department, uh, you know, oh school cops, uh, higher patrol, um, everybody, every law enforcement got on, on a call. And they told me that, you know, that I had been on this list, 
and for me not to open any suspicious packages. And then when they hung up, it's almost like, all right, we're done. We told so they put it on you. They, don't, they take it off of them and put it on right. you. They, so once they tell you don't open any suspicious packages and you do, their, li- their liability right. is, is over. So like, all right. They just kind of wash their hands like, all right, ne- who's next? You know. And then uh, I said to them, I, I said, well, wait, wait a minute. So suspicious packages, and they're like, yeah. you know. This, uh, and I said, well, you know, culturally, you know, a lot of our food comes in suspicious packages. Right. Like, you know, yeah. It might be like, uh, I can't believe it's not butter, but then there's, you know, chile in there. You know, <laughs> yeah. or, you know, it might look like uh, C4, but it's some tamales, you right. know, wrapped in foil. Yes, with, you know, some, they, they might look like wires, but there's a corn husk hanging out. <laughs> like, and they're like, don't open it. They go, don't open any of that. <laughs> that's when like, yeah. Momo opening your stuff, nervous and sweating. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, think there's, I, think, I think they're chicken, but I got to... <laughs> you know, you know we, uh, we're on tour, me, set, set a DL. We had a dude that was uh, uh, selling uh, drugs, like back there. You know, we run into all kinds of people. Right. Mm. He 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 was selling Cialis and Viagra and uh, Levitra. Right. And all, 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 <laughs> he knew his audience too. He though. wasn't selling pills. He was uh, selling right. uh, muscle relaxers <laughs> right, right, and, right. and erectile dysfunction right. pills. <laughs> and there's a lot. I got some Cialis right there. I, I bought like four. <laughs> He goes, he goes, and these are from the factory, man. So these, these are strong. Oh, like these, these are from the factory. Hey George, have you ever taken anything like that? Yeah, like Viagra, Cialis, yeah. or anything? Uh, you know, I took one one time, and, and uh, what was it? Because you know, when you have appointment, you know, like when they're married, sometimes you have appointment sex. Like you say, hey, it's Wednesday, right? You know, is it this? You said this Wednesday or next Wednesday? Yeah, man. <laughs> You know, That's why I tell my wife, schedule me in. She didn't say, don't jack off. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I won't, but you're yeah. not going to be happy. I won't keep the bullets in here. And uh, I, I took one one night uh, for appointment sex, and then my wife and I got in a fight, so I stayed there like with, oh. this, with, with this thing for four days. You couldn't roll over. You couldn't go anywhere. <laughs> you're almost like lockdown, man. got to wear basketball you're shorts. <laughs> lockdown. Does it really work? Because I guess you, it does, huh? You're not talking, but then you're hard. Usually when you talk and kiss, you get hard, but then you, now you, you look at each other, you, you don't say anything, and you got and you're hard, <laughs> knocking over. So lamps. it's awful. Like you know, she's looking at you with like completely like I don't want to ever talk to you again. And then you're hard. So what's boot. the Seattle for? The yin and yang. Yeah, up. The yin and yang. Just in case. Yeah, just to <laughs> feel young. <laughs> George, man, I know that you still got to run an empire. You know what I'm saying? And we were all yeah. talking about, but there, there's a beer that you are fully involved in, not slapping your name on. It's like it's no. like real deal. Yeah, you know, but in, in Torrance, we opened a thing at Bruce Hall, um, and the beer was doing well. We hired a guy from Stone Brewing Company, and then, uh, you know, they're, they're brewing the beer now. I'll send some over to you guys, and the, and then, um, and and uh, they hired a guy from Stone Brewery. So I, I said, you know, can you make um, a beer that has, like, a citrusy? That, that might be okay. He goes, hey, man, I can make a Jamaica beer. I can make a beer that tastes like, a uh, 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 Presidente and squirt, uh, brandy and squirt. Like it could taste like, you know, when the, the uh, Saturday night, uh, your your parents or your uncles would go out and then Sunday morning they would say, hey man, I left my wallet in the car, go go get it. And you'd open the door and it smelled like Saturday night in the car, like the sun had been hitting the car. He, he says, I can make a beer that smells like your uncle's car Sunday morning when you go get his jacket. Did, did, he, did he come through with it? Oh man, yeah, empanada beer. You know, I can make a beer that 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 that, that smells that tastes like the the quiet cannon parking lot in my belly. <laughs> See, I, <laughs> DNA. I put I put DNA in there. Eh? Like, is it hard for George Lopez to to date now? Because it's true, everybody knows. I think George Lopez. I think it is. You know, I, I, I you know, and the, the the worst part is I only want to see people once. You know, right. like I'm so disconnected that I'm I only want to see people once. Like I, I would have been a good flight attendant because I would have made you feel all welcome. <laughs> then you'd never see me again. They go, what if that flight attendant's here? The one we had when we went to Cabo. Right? Yeah. Like, 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 not you get at a all. pillow, you think fall, you pick it up, here you drop your water. <laughs> right. And then second yeah. time it'd be like, just sit your ass down. Right. <laughs> huh? I see you. I see you. Do you think we're all a, thirsty? Is it different now doing the the George Lopez squat when you come out on stage? Or I don't do go all the way down, you know, it's just almost like ceremonial. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of just go, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, slow down, kind of just go. <laughs> That's it. 
<laughs> Should have seen me at eight this morning. That oh was, my god! Do that. Oh. I, I tap my legs so I can at least count. <laughs> oh but, man! Uh, but uh, it it, uh, it uh, definitely the squat. Uh, is uh, it's, it's definitely a lot higher. You know? yeah. Hey man, do you ever? I'm just can't... gonna go like this. I, I, I was like, <laughs> just do a little like, curtsy. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, do you ever look at any of like the old George Lopez episodes or anything like that? Yeah, I go to the doctor. You know, they say you want to watch TV, and then I, I watch myself, and they're like, "Is ah, I didn't know your son was an actor." Right, oh, right. <laughs> oh. Like, no, that's me. So you're forty. This is what's this is what's messed up. You're forty four in the morning and sixty two at night. Right, right. It's like the temperature. The morning's gonna be cold. It's gonna be forty four. But then it's gonna heat up to sixty two. I mean, I look way different than I did because right. you get older, man. But you know, you're you know, I went one time to. Uh, to uh, go to the Hollywood uh, Wax Museum to take a friend. So I said, hey, they're like, go, oh, yeah, go on up there. And I stood next to my wax figure, which is from when I was 50. <laughs> Different in the last 12 years? And they're like, hey, man, we, we're not going to change it. It's, it's a lot to do. I said, no, no. <laughs> no, no. I don't leave it. Uh, right. oh, or when you stand in there and somebody yeah, yeah. else be like, sir, can you move? Oh. We want to get a picture with George. I'm going to go and stand by Elton John. I think it's washed out. <laughs> right. I have Citizen, that Citizen app. There's there's more violent crime in Los Angeles. It's getting a little bit crazy. And then somebody out here in in West, uh, West LA, West Hollywood, Sunset Area, somebody robbed a Trader Joe's. Like, I don't know what you think you're going to get from robbing a Trader Joe's. First of all, nobody uses money. And then you go in there. And you're like, hey, this is a robbery. And they're like, put it in this bag. And then they brought their own bag, that one that they sell you for like a dollar. <laughs> you could rob a bank with the sniffles. You could walk in there and go, oh, <laughs> everybody, oh, just take the money. They take all their clothes off. <laughs> George, how many black suits do you own? Uh, about 75. About what? <laughs> oh, my name was Michelle. Really? About 75. About Damn. 70. How do you know which black suit to put on? Depends how fat I am. Oh, okay. There it is. <laughs> right, right. Body knows. Do you have certain sections in your closet like, okay, this one I was up 10 pounds, this one I was down 10 pounds? I have the PG section, pinche gordo, and I have the <laughs> F and PG. Really? Flaco right. and pinche gordo. <laughs> do you ever it. put on, I remember, do you say at one time you were, uh, you, had taken, you had taken something, oh. George, do you remember that? It was some, a sleep aid. Oh, man, I took an Ambien. Yeah, man, can you explain this story real quick? I took an Ambien, right? So I took an Ambien, and uh, um, <laughs> there's two parts to it. I took an Ambien, and I was watching a history of black Hollywood. And there's, a, <laughs> and there's a woman there, and she says, you know, there's just been so much racism and the mistreatment of black people. And I go, I had a lot of them on my show. I thought she was talking to me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I said, I had a lot of them. I thought we were having a conversation. It was TV. <laughs> Man. I said I had a lot. I said I had a lot on my show. <laughs> you can't put that on me. I thought she was in front of me. Oh my god, Man. that's crazy. And, Listen and to this one. I'm in a suit, Listen white shirt, it. tie, dressed up like that, hair dressed. My wife comes in. She goes, "Where are you going?" I said, "I got a show in Las Vegas. I got to go right now. I got about an hour. I'm, I'm gonna go to the show." She goes, "George." I said, "No, what's up? What, what's going on?" I said, "I got a show to do, Ann. It's Thursday. I got a show." She goes, honey, you're at home. You're upstairs in the bedroom. You don't have a show. What? <laughs> yeah. My man got up, got, got dressed. Up, got dressed. And thought he had a show. Put the, <laughs> put the legendary cool. black suit on. I thought I was backstage in Las Vegas. I was going to walk to the show. It's hilarious. That is hilarious, wow. man. Don't take that. Yeah. <laughs> a dragonfly got in my house yesterday. Right? Those things are like this big. And when he went out the window, I said, don't leave. Yeah, <laughs> I need you. Hey, Take me with you. Hey, man, you. Hey, and you and you really like you really cannot be out. I mean, it's it, it, it's not it's not safe to be out. What keeps you working like that, though, George? You know what? I I uh, you know I've been doing it for so long, and I really I really love it, man. I enjoy I enjoy it. You know, mm -hmm. it's the only and and really, if I didn't do it, there's nothing else in the day that I would do. <laughs> To occupy any time, you just, I mean, I can't sit in that chair that long. All righty now, George, you're on a raft. Yes. You're in the middle of the ocean. You see two people floating in the ocean. Yeah. You can only pull up one. Yes. All righty? Yeah. You look in the ocean, 
You see Gabriel Iglesias. Yep. And you see Eric Estrada. Oh. Who do you pull up and who do you let drown? I would pull up uh, uh, Gabriel Iglesias. I heard that. What if you see? It'd be tough. Right. <laughs> I don't know if I, could, I, don't know if I, probably, I probably But could. your intentions I were try to, to pull them up. up yeah. Your intentions were, all right, you, you're on the same raft. You look in the ocean, you see Donald Sterling, and you see an Eric Estrada. Who do you pull up and who do you let drown? I pull up, oh my God. That's a good one. Uh, Hey that's man, that's, that's, that shit that, is to the bone there, huh? I was like, oh my god. Uh, Jennifer Lopez said this, man. She said, I will let both them motherfuckers drive. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, both those motherfuckers. Yeah, there it is, man. George Lopez, man. <laughs> I love you. Give me five, my brother. There, there it is, man. George Lopez, Big Boy TV. Enjoy. Thank you, my thank friend. You, Hello. You. Our road started at, at, you know, at Power 106. It's gone through the quiet cannon in East LA. It's gone through suites and showrooms in Las Vegas. It's gone through helping military families. It's gone through a baby shower or two. And it's gone through his wedding. And there's nobody that I hold closer in my heart than I do Big Boy. And I remember when I first uh, met him, and through the surgeries as well, the, uh, um, when I first met him and I noticed that he had something on his arm and it said, I the son. And in memory of his mother, I can say as my brother that Ida is shining down and sending her love and her spirit to you and your family and to all your friends, big boy. And nobody means more to the city of Los Angeles and to the people of Los Angeles and to all the people who listen to radio all over the world, armed forces included, and to the music, Dr. Dre spoke out that. And que viva Big Boy, que viva Los Angeles, and welcome to the most famous street in the world, Big Boy! Do you find now, George, being in your 60s, is it a, is oh, it a different world? Man, it's a, it's a different world, man. Oh, man. I mean, yeah, it just, you know, you don't think of getting old, and then it happens, and then you realize, man, you're, you know, like once I almost, I almost, I was walking, you know, and you almost trip it, but you kind of like are running, you know, like you kind of look like you're trying to catch yeah, yourself. Yeah. And then some dude goes, don't try to be young, puto. I, like, <laughs> <laughs> I almost crushed my face, man. I was running like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> hey. And I caught myself and tried to go, don't try to be young, puto. I'm like, break my fucking chin, my fucking eye, horrible. <laughs>